Christian Maya. So my question was, I originally wanted to ask about the existence of the archangels, but I think because you said the conceptual is not really enough to understand those things, I wanted to ask about my own. So I, I experienced that I have a kind of a laziness. Let's say an example this morning, I had to fill a package of of, of basin flour from the packet in the jar and I just knew I had to cut it with a scissor open and pour it in the jar but I was like oh, I have to do the, the three steps to the side get the scissors cut it open and bring the scissor back and then I tear it tear it open the packet and try to put it in the in the jar but it did not work at all and I had a huge mess afterwards I also say ah, I have I have it tomorrow you know I can do it tomorrow I can do it later I don't need to do it now. <laughs> What's the thing that I can, uh, how I can change this? I think it's, I think it's a laziness, more or less. So, Lino, I think you shouldn't change anything because this is your time to be lazy. <laughs> <laughs> Once you grow up a little bit, you won't be able to be lazy. Once you start studying, so just go ahead and be a little lazy, that's fully fine. <laughs> and as far as the archangels go, you see, what happens is that on this planet, on this earth, there are people who live and they have developed an ability to give hope, to give comfort, to give solace, to give love to others around them. So what happens when those people pass away, they remain in the memories of others. And then, over a period of time, they start to take on the shape of godly beings. Gradually, as the centuries pass, they become more and more powerful as spirits because people connect with the memories of that person and they also genetically inherit the knowledge of that person. And so that person is connected with people and it's a form of an energetic connection. And they become more and more powerful and people are able to allow that energetic connection to impact them even if that connection is only in their thinking so they are then the archangels, they are then the gods they are then all these beings that one can connect with and some people say, that's all in the head it may be in the head, but Clearly, there is enough evidence that these have impacts on the lives of others. The archangels are those that are the really powerful ones, which means that they've been longer in the memory. They've been longer around as thoughts, as memories, as connections, as spirits. That's what archangels are. Like the gods, in the Indian subcontinent, the Roman gods, the Greek gods, they're not alive anymore because people don't relate to them anymore. But the archangels are alive. And perhaps the Roman gods are going to be reborn in the future as people invite them back into their lives. So these are energetic connections which people create and maintain so that they can impact their lives and transform things in their lives. And as far as you being lazy, it is important and already very valuable that you are able to observe your actions and to see that what you did resulted in a mess. And that's already a lot. And then when you're a little older, you can 
try to stop doing those silly things. But for the moment, I think it's okay. Great. For the archangels, I wondered, because you, uh, in one satsang, you said um, about the seers. Some, some people can, can, what, can see in the, in the future by connecting with one of the archangels. You said it's uh, energetic. So I wondered, can only one person communicate with the archangel at a time? Or can, for example, a few people uh, talk, talk to him at the same time and see in the future? Or is it limited one? When you speak about seeing in the future, connecting with angels, connecting with spirits, these are all very personal things. They are individual things. With many people, it is something simply happening in their thinking. With other people, they are connecting with some sort of entity, energetic entity, and they believe that that's the Archangel. With others, they are connecting with an Archangel. You can never, ever, ever, ever know what is actually happening. So, the experience is individual. It is what is happening in your head, in your heart, that's what counts. The one thing where you can be a thousand percent sure is when you connect with the Soul, because you can feel it. At one point, you start to feel the impulse of the Soul. And even if someone says that that's your imagination, ah, you know, Maya told you about it, so now you started to believe it. Even then, it is better to have an imagination of something which is within yourself, than something which is external to you. I'm not saying not to connect with the Angels, and I'm not saying not to connect with the Gods. I'm saying, don't forget to connect with the Soul within, because that Soul is of the same material as the Angels are, as the Gods are, it's all Cosmic Soul material in individualized forms, and the form that you know best is the form within. There are people who read the Tarot, and they are very strongly connected with the Angels. And it is through the energetic connection with the Angels that they are able to predict things. That is what they are doing. And no one ever knows for sure what is what, and what is happening. There are very, very few people who even know that when you connect with a Spirit, you have to also give something in return. You can't just take. Because if you do that, something will be extracted from you which you don't know. So, it's a very individual thing. It is beyond the scope of the logical, it's beyond the scope of the conceptual. The Angels act in the area of the occult, they connect with human beings in the transformative consciousness, not in the conceptual. And in the transformative, this can be that, and that can be this. So, if you want to connect with the Archangel Michael, then you connect. And the best way, and the safest way to connect with any being outside yourself, is to connect with the Source within, the Soul, because it's of the same material. Spirit material, if you want to put it that way. So fascinating, I just, I, just, to, just to know it, not even to wanting to, to connect with, with them. Yeah, it's very, I mean, these are ancient beings, you know. They are in the memory, in the genetic memory of all beings on this planet. They exist in those memories, either in the genetic memory or in the actual memory. So connecting with these beings, whether they are the gods in India, whether it's Ganesha, or it's, it's Sri Krishna, or it's Shiva, or it's the Archangel Michael, the Archangel Gabriel, the Archangel Samuel, or it's the goddesses and the gods of 
of ancient Europe, the Roman gods, the Greek gods, these are connections which we have. Some have been forgotten, some may revive again. It's important to know that these are memories which we carry with us in the very cells of our bodies. And perhaps our connection to them is with the materiality of our own bodies. So what is outside is inside, what is inside is outside. Everything is reflected within the body itself. The very universe outside is reflected within the body. It's reflected in every cell. If you look at a cell, if you look at an atom, if you go within an atom, it is a one-to-one -one reflection of the universe outside. The distances between the particles, the subatomic particles, this whole existence is a is a is miraculous and as you expand your consciousness you'll start to experience these things and you expand your consciousness not by sitting for hours in meditation but by tuning into the truth of your being being in this present moment and acting from that truth that's how the expansion happens you're not spaced out somewhere on Mars you're present here and now and as you're present you expand Cool. Yes.